Hi everybody, namaste. It is Kate, welcome to Yoga With Me. I am in my beautiful home studio at Jewel Yoga here in Connecticut in the States. And I have for you today a little bit more of an intense flow. My happy flows tend to be pretty mellow and today we're gonna heat it up, spice it up a little bit. The intention is to bring in some of that core strength, build that inner fire, and also build some physical strength as we go. Remember to always listen to your body. And this is a video. The beautiful thing about it is that you can always just hit that pause button, right? Take a breath, connect back in, and just go at your own pace. The entire flow is just under an hour, and that includes the centering and includes the shavasana. So let's flow. yourself to set an intention. Whatever is coming up for you, maybe the reason you're on your mat, maybe something's happening in your life you're trying to cultivate or let go of. Anything you want to bring up energy to or awareness around. Let the eyes come open. Next, inhale. Let the arms float out and up. At the top, press the palms together and exhale. Drop your heart center. Again, inhale, arms out and up. Pressing the palms, just linking that movement and breath. One more, inhale. Press the palms. Exhale, down your heart center. Lovely, this time inhale the arms out and up overhead. Pause at the top with the fingers nice and high, soften the shoulders. Again, with the fingers nice and high. On the inhale, soften the shoulders and the exhale. Beautiful, and then just start to bend through the knees, let the hands come down to the thighs. Maybe walk the feet out to the edges of the mat a little bit more. A few rounds of standing cat cow, so we inhale with the chest, lift the tail. And then as we exhale, press the hands into the legs, drop the head, drop the tail, pull the belly button into the spine. Inhale, just moving at your own pace. Exhale to release into that standing cat. Beautiful. One more round like that. Inhaling. And exhaling. Beautiful. Come back through a neutral spine. And just take the gaze over the right shoulder. 
Use your inhale to come back through center and take a gaze over the left shoulder. One more. Exhale. Inhale back through center. Exhale into the left. And then inhaling back through. Stand on up, pressing through the feet. Walk them back in side to side. And then with the hands at the hips, just start to bend through the knee. So press the right foot forward and, excuse me, left hip forward. You'll notice the right hip comes back. And then bend into the right knee. Let the left hip come back. Inhaling and exhaling. Just working those thighs. Starting to get them warmed up a little bit. Into the hips, into the knees, even into the ankles here. Beautiful. Last one. And that left knee down. Inhaling back through center. And a nice deep inhale. Arms sweep out and up. And on the exhale, take the swan dive forward. So a nice flat back. Deep bend to the knees to start. Allow yourself to come into this first forward fold. Again, widening the feet if you need a little more room. And a nice deep bend to the knees. Okay? Allowing the head to hang heavy. Maybe you take some yeses and noes here. Maybe the hands behind the toes, or just the mat. Beautiful. And then with the feet away, scooch them back in, heel toeing, and on your next inhale, come on up halfway. Take a pause here. So a nice flat spine, really reach the crown of the head forward, press the tail back, gaze is at the earth. Breathe. On your next inhale, lengthen a little further. And then exhale your way down to the ground. From here, we reverse that swan dive. Come all the way back up to the top. Nice flat back. Press the palms together. Exhale down through heart center. Bring the feet into that hip lifts apart. They're not there already. And then a nice deep inhale. Arms sweep out and up. And then the exhale, take that swan dive forward. Inhale to lift halfway. And on the exhale, ground the hands, step both feet back, come into our first plank. Now remembering in plank, we can always modify by dropping the knees or even coming into table top. Yogi's choice there. But in our plank, our hands are spread nice and wide, our shoulders are strong, the belly button's pulling in, there's a real lift happening. Legs are engaged, the heels are pressing back. We pause, we breathe. And then when you're ready, start to lift the hips nice and high. Press the hips back. Chest comes towards the thighs and we find our first downward facing dog. And when you arrive in that downward facing dog, adjust, right? Find your positioning. Find a little movement. Maybe some bending into the knees, right? One knee than the other. Warming up those hips even further. Hands really pressing into the mat. Pressing the chest towards the thighs. And then come through stillness. Let's all take a nice deep bend in the knees together. And then work your way back up. Sink it with the breath. Inhale, lift, and then exhale, bend. Inhaling to rise. And exhaling to bend. One more time. Inhaling to rise. Lift the hips nice and high. Exhale to bend the knees. Inhale your way back up to that downward dog, and the same thing, arrive and find some stillness here. Shoulders rolling open, thumb and the index finger pressing into the earth. Belly button pulling not only towards the spine, but also up and engaging that lock, our bandha. Breathe. On your next inhale, take a nice deep breath. Stay for the exhale, and then walk the feet towards the top of the mat. Find that forward fold again, and then as you arrive, inhale, halfway lift, flatten back, find the length, and then exhale, release on down. Reverse your swan dive all the way up to the top, press the palms together, and exhale, hands down through heart center. Here we go, right back in, inhale, arms out and up. On the exhale, come on down, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway. Beautiful. Plant the hands, both feet come back, back to our plank asana. 
Lovely. We pause in the plank, right? Get ourselves set up, really pressing through the shoulders, opening the back body, the shoulder blades. And then when you're ready, everybody shift those toes forward, right? So the weight really shifts forward. We drop the knees onto the mat for this first one. Hug the elbows in, and then lower slowly down. All the way to the earth as we arrive. Hands stay in place, toes ground. Inhale, lift the chest, and then exhale, release it back down. Inhale to lift, exhale to release. One more. Exhale to release. Then ground the knees, press your way back up to that knee down plank, tuck the toes, lift the hips, press on back to your downward facing dog. Now remember, any time as we're doing our vinyasa flows, you can come back to that modification by grounding, <laughs> by grounding the knees before you lower on down. Beautiful. When you're ready, weight into the left foot, the right leg lifts up and back for our first three-legged dog. Toes down to the earth, kick through the ball of the foot. Right, so the hips stay nice and square. Nice deep inhale. On the exhale, knee bends, and we shift forward to our first knee up plank. Pause, breathe. So we stay for the inhale and exhale. And then use your next inhale to press on back. And the exhale to pull it forward. Come into a rhythm here with the breath, inhaling back. Exhaling, pull the knee in. Inhale back. And this time, exhale, step the foot in between the hands. And then root to rise up to our crescent warrior. Fingertips high, shoulders soft. Ride, widen the base if you need to to get that stability. From here, go ahead, straighten out the front leg. Lift the fingertips high, find your inhale. And on the exhale, goddess arms, re-bend the knee. Inhale, pressing it up. Exhale to release, sinking that breath and movement. Inhale up. Exhale to release. Two more, inhaling up. Exhale to release. Inhale up. Exhale to release. We pause. Beautiful. Open the chest. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Fingers nice and wide. Then hands to the hips. Give yourself a little shake if you need it. And the shoulder, a little shimmy, a little roll. And then take a nice deep inhale. And exhale, bend the back knee. Nice deep inhale up. Exhale, bend the back knee. Inhaling up. Exhale, bend the back knee. Beautiful. Inhale up. Exhale, bend the back knee. Last one. Inhaling up. Exhale, bend the back knee. And then inhale your way up. Return to that crescent warrior. Fingertips high, shoulders soft. One more inhale. And then exhale, plant the hands. Listen carefully. We lift this right foot and bend the knee so we come back into that knee up. Plank. Pause. Breathe. On your next inhale, press the foot back. Back to our three-legged dog, nice and high. And then exhale, let the foot come back down to the earth. Go ahead, pedal out the legs. Return to that space of downward facing dog. If you'd like, you can come into table or child at any point to modify. Maybe you just need a couple breaths to catch back up. Go ahead and pause. Come into that child's pose. And then when you're ready, press play. On your next inhale, that right foot grounds and the left leg lifts up and back. Toes towards the earth, really pressing, kicking that foot towards the back, away from you. Nice deep inhale. And use the exhale to shift the weight forward, knee to the chest, and we pause for the first one. Stay for the inhale and the exhale. Then inhale, press it back. Exhale, pull it forward. Inhale, press it back. Exhale, pull it forward. Inhale, press it back. Awesome. Exhale, pull it forward. Pause. And then land that foot between the hands. Now, if it doesn't work, then meet us there, right? Get yourself into that runner's lunge. Get your grounding, your stability. And then when you're ready, inhale your way up. Fingertips high. Shoulders soft. Take a few breaths and settle in here. 
in this crescent warrior. Breathing. And then on your next inhale, straighten out the front leg, fingertips high, nice deep breath in. And then exhale, bend the knee. Bend the elbows into goddess. Inhale, press it up. Exhale, release back down. Inhale up. Exhale, release. Two more. Inhale, press it up. Exhale to release. Inhale up. Exhale to release. And we pause. Squeezing those shoulder blades. Fingers really wide. You can feel that my fingers are. Yeah. Nice and wide. Breathing. Lovely, you guys. Really nice work. From here, hands come down to the hips. Nice deep inhale. Lengthen the spine on the exhale. Bend the knee. Inhaling up. Exhale to release. Inhale up. Exhale to release. Inhale up. Exhale to release. One more. Inhale up. Exhale to release. Bend the knee and then come on back up. Sweep the fingertips to the sky. Shoulders soft. Nice deep inhale, exhale, soften, and then inhale, fingertips high, exhale, plant the hands. And the same thing here, so really plant the hands, use the core strength to lift the foot, keep the knee bent, pause for the breath, and then use your inhale to sweep the leg back behind you, and then exhale, the foot down to the ground. Same thing, we come back to that downward facing dog. And we arrive, right? Maybe a little bend to the knees to lift the hips a little bit higher. Nice deep breaths. And then when you are ready, walk the feet to the hands. You can jump, step, or hop always. Arrive in that forward fold and inhale, lift halfway. Exhale to release back down. Reverse your swan dive, come all the way back up to the top, palms press together, and then exhale, down, big heart, center, allow your eyes to close down for a moment, return to your intention, return to gratitude, Exhale, take that swan dive forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, both feet step back, come into your plank pose. Now, as always, we pause for a breath or two. Yogi's choice here. Options to just lift the hips and press back to downward facing dog. There are options to flow through vinyasa. The weight shifts forward. We lower down, half leg, chaturanga, inhaling to the up dog, and then exhaling, flipping over the toes to lift the hips, press your way back to downward facing dog. Breathe, arrive, ground the left foot and the right leg lifts up and back for three-legged dog, nice deep inhale. And exhale, toes point towards the earth, hips stay nice and square. Lift it a little higher on the inhale. And then exhale, press, step the foot forward in between the hands. Back heel comes in and down as we start to set up for warrior two. So the left toes are at the long edge of the mat. Right elbow and right knee connect. Then peel the left arm up as we come right into our extended side angle. Fingertips high on the left hand. As always, we'll be here for a few breaths, so if you have a different variation, you want to start to bring the left hand forward, you can bring the right hand forward for a beach ball, more traditional, the right hand comes down on the inside, but just stay right here. Breathing, opening up the left side of the body, 
Next, inhale, pull the belly button towards the spine, right? Really use the core strength to hinge your way up into warrior two. So go ahead and check that form, right? We want the front heel and the back arch to be in line. We want the hips to be nice and open. We want the front hand reaching forward, the back hand reaching back. Go ahead, check it out. Make sure it's not misbehaving back there. Arrive and breathe. And then when you're ready, flip the front palm. Take a nice deep inhale and use the exhale to reverse your warrior. This back hand down the leg, around the body. Keep the bend in that front knee. Again, opening up the entire right side from the hip to the fingertips. Breathing in, creating the space. One more breath. Awesome. And bring your way back to that warrior two. Straighten out the front leg. Hands to the hips. Turn the toes to the long edge of the mat. And let the toes both pigeon toe in a little bit. With a nice flat back on the inhale, lengthening the spine. On the exhale, we hinge and we come on down forward. Let the hands walk down the legs. And then allow them to come to the mat. Now, if the hands don't come to the mat, go ahead, grab a block. Or just keep the hands on the legs, right? No big deal. Nice deep inhale, come up halfway, lengthen the spine again. And then exhale, release on down. Maybe the hands come underneath the body here to get a little bit deeper into the stretch. Gaze, gaze at the earth. Breathing. Line those beautiful inhales and exhales. And then coming back with the hands underneath the shoulders. I'm going to go ahead and grab a blanket because I know where we're going next. But we're going to walk the hands along the long edge of the mat, turning on the feet so we come back to our runner's lunge. But the hands are on the inside of this right foot. Now this back knee is going to drop on down. We're going to untuck the toes of that back leg, get a nice little stretch happening, coming into our lizard variation. So always lots of options here. You can stay right like this, nice and lifted. You can even grab a block and get a little bit higher. The goal here is some sensation in this right hip. Right hand can press the right knee open a little bit, rolling onto the outside of that outside edge of that foot, but be mindful, right? Be mindful that you're not pressing too much, that you're not getting too much sensation. I was remembering we're not looking for pain, we're looking for sensation. You can stay nice and lifted here, or we get a little further down, right? You can start to lower down onto the forearms. The block might be nice there, right? Noticing where you feel the sensation, or come on all the way down onto the forearms. Again, you have these choice. Just make sure you try to keep that spine nice and long wherever you go. So if you come down here and the spine's kind of rounding, then come on up on two blocks, right? Keep the spine long. If the head can release, go ahead and let it release a little bit. Find your breath. Notice where you feel sensation. And if the mind starts to wander as we Pause the pose, let it come back to the breath, to the gratitude, to your intention. One more nice deep breath here. And we'll slowly make our way back on up, pressing in the hand into the, uh, excuse me, into the mat, right? Tucking the toes, lifting that left knee. You can scooch the blanket out of the way if you'd like, right? And then from here, if you want a little added bonus, the right knee glues to the right tricep, and we start to float that right leg, right? If you're into it. If you're not, just come on straight up and back into downward facing, uh, excuse me, three-legged dog. Bend the knee, open the hips, stop them up. Try to keep the arms nice and square here. You tend to open, see if you can keep them nice and square. 
Pressing the weight evenly into the hands. Back to our three-legged dog. Nice deep inhale. And then exhale. Foot comes to the earth. Go ahead and take a little pedal of the feet. Again, if you need a break, I'm going to clean the steps. Drop to table. Drop to child. And just pause. Breathe. You're going to come back to the breath. And then from downward facing dog, find some stillness. Breathing in and out. Weight into the right foot and the left leg will lift up and back for our three-legged dog. Nice deep inhale and exhale. Pause. Kick the foot back. Really nice long spine. Toes to the earth so the hips stay square. Nice deep inhale. And on the exhale, step the foot forward in between the hands. Meet us there, right? So if that foot doesn't step all the way forward, help it. And then elbow and knee connect. And that right arm peels up as that back heel comes in and down, right? For our warrior two position. Arm comes up nice and high. And again, we find this side angle variation. And you can stay right here. Float the arm forward. Float both arms forward. Right, drop the hand in. You find your groove. Maybe the gaze comes up a little bit to roll the body open. Find the breath. Belly button to spine, right? So we move from the core here. And the top arm glides up into that warrior two. And as you arrive, check the form. Front heel to back arch, arms nice and wide, reaching backwards, reaching forward, nice and centered. Gaze can come over the front fingers, that is traditional, but if it doesn't feel good, then let the gaze be where it needs to be. Check that back hand, yes, fingers active, everything active, right? So feet are pressing in, energy's pulling up through the core, lifting the crown of the head, arms reaching wide, shoulders pulling together, breathe. Flip the front palm, reverse your warrior. So remember that back arm on the back leg, around, but don't lose the bend in the front leg. Looking up, opening that whole left side this time, finding the breath. One more nice inhale and exhale, and then the core pulls us down. Do that warrior two. Arriving there. One same thing on the other side. We straighten out the front leg. We turn the toes to the long edge of the mat. Hands come to the hips. Nice deep inhale. And use that exhale to fold on down forward. So same thing. If the hands don't reach the earth, then no worries. Just keep them on the legs. If they do, let's keep them grounded for right now. This time we inhale, halfway lift, long spine, and then exhale, release. And then this time, maybe we walk the hands forward. So we come into more of a down dog top with this wide-legged bottom. A little bit different. Allowing the breath to be steady in and out, right? And as we pause the pose, the breath becomes our fluidity. We breathe. Shoulders are rolling open. Weight into the thumb and the index finger. After the next breath, up the hands back underneath the shoulders. Inhale, lift top leg. Exhale, release down. Find that forward fold. And then from here, the hands walk up the edge of the mat, right? Back to that runner's lunge with the feet on the in, excuse me, the hands on the inside of that left foot. We go ahead and set up for that lizard posture again. So I like to drop the back knee so it feels good to have a blanket or something. You can always roll the mat to get a little extra padding. You can also do this variation with the leg lifted. So again, all these different variations of poses are for you to make a practice your own, right? 
So decide where you want to be for this posture. You just stay nice and lifted here. Left hand might press the left knee to open up that left hip a little more. Remember, when we're looking for sensation in that left hip, and you may feel a lot of sensation in the front of the right thigh as well. And again, an observation of where you're feeling the sensation. You can stay nice and lifted, or you can start to drop on down. Keeping the spine straight as long as you can. Releasing the head if that feels okay for you. Settling in and finding the breath. Sometimes when my mind starts to wander, I love to add the breath count. So inhaling for a count of four, and then exhaling for a count of four, just to keep the mind a little more focused. Releasing any tension you may have that you're holding on to in the face. Middle in the jaw. Taking two more breaths here. Notice what's happening with the sensation in the body and the mind. And we get through that second breath, we ground the hands. Uh, move those blocks out of the way. We can tuck the right toes, lift that right knee, move the blanket if need be. Woo. And then, if you'd like a little extra bonus, the left knee presses into the left tricep, and we lift that foot. And then we inhale the left leg back for that three-legged dog first, then the head, then the knee, stack the hips, open up. Pressing the heel to the bum. And then re-square the hips, extend the leg back to that downward facing dog. And then go ahead and drop the left foot down to the earth. Find your downward facing dog again. If you'd like to take child's pose or tabletop here, go for it. Breathing. When you're ready, go ahead, drop the knees to the earth. Come into tabletop for a moment, stacking the shoulders above the wrists, hips above the knees. Come through a few rounds of cat cows. Again, inhaling, lifting the chest, lifting the tail, and then exhaling, dropping the head, dropping the tail, rounding through. Two more. This is your own pace. Exhaling to release. Inhale. Exhale. Lovely. And then from here, walking the hands forward, hand placement, shifting the weight forward to come into that knee down plank, adjusting if you need to. Take a nice deep inhale, find some length. Shift the weight forward, and on the exhale, start to lower the body. Down. We're going to come onto the belly and you just looch back a little bit. Never quite fit on the mat. <laughs> and take a nice deep inhale. Hands should be under the shoulders if you scooched. Nice deep inhale. Ground the feet. Ground the toes in. Lifting up the chest. Using not only the back but the core. Exhale to release. Two more like that. Inhaling up. Exhale to release. Inhale one more time. Exhale to release. Beautiful. Stack the hands, make a little pillow. Head comes on to the pillow, bend the knees, release the feet, let the windshield wiper. A few times, back and forth. Awesome. Then we can bring the Leg back through center, feet reground, lifting the head, hands come behind the body, so down the side of the body, palms down. Coming into a locust variation. On your next inhale, we really want to press the pubic bone into the earth, right? If that's uncomfortable, you can always use a blanket 
to give you a little bit of padding. On your next inhale, press the hands back so you start to engage the back body and lift the chest. Now you can just sit here with this half variation, or you can start to lift the legs as well. So it's like you're reaching the fingertips back, but you keep the gaze at the mat to keep the neck nice and long. Toes are pointing away as well. All the energy is racing back, except for the crown of the head is reaching forward, keeping that spine nice and long. Find your breath. See if you can rise a little bit on the inhale. Stay on the exhale. A little bit more. Inhale, make your rise. Exhale to stay. Last one, inhale, rise. Exhale, release, Whew, all the way down. Stack the hands, head comes to the pillow and that same lovely release of the back. Coming through center as you're ready. And my favorite transition of all time, I'm just gonna roll onto our backs. So however you'd like to get there, make your way onto your back. And then go ahead and hug those knees in. You can come into a happy baby variation here if you'd like, right? Bringing the knees towards the chest a little bit more. Hands grabbing the outside of the feet and pulling the knees, gently pulling the knees down towards the armpits. So you can come into that variation or just keep the knees together and maybe you try both and see what resonates a little bit more. Okay. Awesome. When you're ready, we're going to make the diamond with the fingers. So thumbs together, pointers together. And we're going to bring that shape underneath the sacrum. From here, the legs are going to come up. We might need to adjust a little bit. Come up towards the ceiling. Flex the toes back towards the body. And you can keep a nice generous bend in the legs as well, right? I want to make sure you're comfortable. Nice deep inhales and exhales. Maybe find a little point and flex of the feet. You can also roll the ankles. Just make sure if you're rolling one way, you roll the other. Yeah. Beautiful. Then come back to stillness. And if, you, if your legs are totally straight, you can keep them totally straight or put a little bend in them. Or you can put a deep bend, right? So again, you have each choice. A deep bend, a, a slight bend, or you can keep them straight. I'm going to take the slight bend option. Take a nice deep inhale. And on the exhale, lower the right leg down. On the inhale, bring it back up. On the exhale, lower the left leg down. On the inhale, bring it back up. On the exhale, right. Inhale to rise. Exhale to lower. Inhale to rise. Exhale to lower. Inhale to rise. Lower. Breathe in and rise. And then exhale, lower. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, lower the left. Stay for the inhale. And exhale. Inhale, both rise. Woo! Exhale, lower. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, lower. Stay for the inhale. And exhale. And then inhale, rise back up. Beautiful, great job. Hug the knees in. Maybe find a little rock, a little movement. And then feet come onto the earth. Hands ground down along by your side as well. Breathing. Feet are about hip widths apart. And then walk the feet a little bit closer to the bum. Ideally, you want your fingers and your, excuse me, your heels and your fingers touching, but everybody's body is different and everybody's flex is different. So just walk the heels as close as you can. From here, take a nice deep inhale and exhale to clear. On the inhale, start to press into the feet, lifting the hips, coming into a modified bridge. 
Now, you can stay right here with the palms flat onto the earth, right? This might be a great amount of sensation for you. You can also start to clasp the fingers underneath the body and then rolling on to the outside of the arms a little bit, tucking the shoulders under and start to lift the hips even higher. Now you have the hands to leverage. You can press them into the earth, start to lift even higher. Remember the knees don't want to come open. We want to keep them energetically pressing towards midline. Breathing, breath is strong. Enjoying the sensation in the back body. Pressing into the feet, maybe even the toes lift. Breathe. We've got two more breaths here. Beautiful. And that last inhale, you can lift a little bit higher. And then slowly release the hands if they're there. Untuck the shoulders. And then challenge yourself to go slow. Roll down vertebrae by vertebrae. All the way. It should take like 15 to 20 seconds for you actually to get off the way down to the earth. Lovely. Bring the feet. Bring the feet wide on the mat. Bring the feet wide on the mat and let's come back to that windshield wipering. I do the windshield wipering a lot, but I think it's really great for the low back, especially when you're doing a more intense or vigorous practice. Making sure you keep that low back in check is super important. Come back through center when you're ready. We're going to take a moving bridge this time. We'll do two rounds of it. So, coming back to that bridge position, right? Heels towards the bottom. Maybe touching the fingertips, maybe not. On the inhale, we lift the hips. Nice and deep. So the movement will stop before the breath does, right? So keep lifting on the inhale. And then, as you exhale, that slow roll down. Now, if you don't want to do this variation, you can come back to an active bridge here, or you can even come into wheel if that is in your wheelhouse. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Next moving bridge on your inhale, lifting the hips. Again, the movement's going to stop before the breath, so keep pressing the hips up towards the sky. Keep those knees towards midline. Then when you finally reach that exhale, Nice and slow, all the way down. If you're in a different variation, give yourself one more breath, and then come on to meet us with our knees hugged in to the body. Nice, you guys. Great work. Ground feet, and we'll take a figure four. So if you're like a huge pigeon advocate, then you can always come in, roll over, and come into a pigeon variation here. But I really like figure four. I feel like it keeps everybody super safe. We'll start with the right leg. The right foot is going to come up, and the ankle is going to press onto the left knee, like the top of the left thigh where it meets the knee. I like to encourage people to start by taking this right hand and pressing that right knee open. That's that sensation we're looking for in the right hip. So we'll start there, give yourselves a few breaths. And then if you'd like to come into a different variation, right, you can start to lift that, float that left foot, right? And you might grab around the shin, and you might straighten out the leg completely, grab behind the thigh, but I encourage you that if you take a variation, you're still pressing that right knee away from the body. So whether you're physically doing it or you're energetically doing it, right? Opening up. Maybe the eyes close down and you breathe into the sensations. The 
left leg is floating, let it come on down. And then go ahead and bring the arms by your side. You can get them straight out, maybe a goddess arm, maybe they come on up overhead, right? Grabbing opposite wrists. Keep this figure for shape, and then go ahead and drop that right foot over to the left side, taking a twist. You may need to hop onto that left hip a little bit. Okay, try to keep that figure four shape. Now, if this just feels totally uncomfortable for you, then go ahead and just take a regular side twist. Okay, see if you can keep that figure four shape. It's just a little bit of a different sensation. And keep the right knee not pointing up towards the body, rather pointing towards the sky, really keeping and opening up the hips still while you take a twist. The gaze might come the opposite way. back to your breath. Enjoy the pause. Bringing the hands back down by your side if they're in a different shape, and then slowly making your way back through center, unraveling the leg, maybe giving that right knee a hug in. And letting it come long on the mat for a moment. Let the left leg come long, so both legs long. Take a nice big full body stretch, pressing the hands and the toes away. And then we'll rebend. We've got the other side to do. So, right foot grounds, left leg comes up, left ankle onto that right knee. So it's not quite on top of the knee, it's where the bottom of the thigh and the top of the knee meet. And then start with that press away, right? So that physical press away. Opening up that left hip, breathing. Again, the eyes might start to close down. It feels right and comfortable for you. And then when you're ready, if you'd like to take a different variation, start to float that right leg. And the same thing, grabbing behind the shin or behind the thigh, but again, pressing that left knee away, either physically or just energetically. Keep your hip nice and flowing. Trying to keep the shoulders towards the earth so you're not rounding up. You want to be nice and flat. Staying here. Again, coming back to that breath, finding the breath. shape. Arms can come out by your side, maybe overhead and dropping the left foot to the right. Taking the twist, hopping the right hip a little bit. Maybe the gaze comes the other way. Maybe the eyes close down. Pointing that left knee towards the sky as much as you can. Finding that breath. Connecting back to your intention, maybe to gratitude. One more breath here. And then working your way back on up. Same thing with that left knee hug in, give it a squeeze. And then let go 
both legs come along. Maybe take that nice overhead stretch again. And we'll set ourselves up for that Shavasana. If there's any final movements you might need to take, right? go ahead and take them. Allow yourself some space. It's a video. You can always hit pause and come back to it. And then allow yourself to scan the body. Relaxing through the toes, the legs, and the pelvis feel heavy. And the hands release, pressing the shoulders away from the ears for a moment. Letting the breath soften. Letting the jaw relax, separate the teeth. And for the next few moments, all you have to do is be. Take a nice deep inhale through the nose. And exhale gently out through the mouth. Allow the movements to get bigger. And just allow yourself to naturally wake up. Eventually making your way to one side or the other. And allowing yourself to hit pause for just one more moment. Taking one more nice deep breath here. And then slowly pressing your way up to a seated position. Whatever that means to you, whatever feels right, whatever feels comfortable. Allow the eyes to stay closed or soft. Allow the hands to come back to heart center. Let me return to gratitude. Noticing what comes up with you in a thought way. Allowing yourself to return to your intention. And taking a final few deep breaths. I am grateful for your time, your space, your energies, yogis. Thank you for sharing this beautiful practice of yoga with me. Namaste.